Detaching from people and situations is a concept that aligns with certain Stoic principles. Stoicism, an ancient Greek philosophy, teaches individuals to cultivate inner tranquility by accepting the things they cannot change and focusing on what they can control. In this video, we will delve into the teachings of Stoicism, examining how each principle can be applied to the practical steps outlined for detaching from people and situations. One step away from that person for a while. Stoicism teaches us the importance of maintaining our inner tranquility irrespective of external circumstances. The first step in detaching from someone is to step away temporarily. This is not a gesture of avoidance, but a strategic move to gain perspective and prevent our emotions from clouding our judgment. Stoic philosopher Cicero, in his letters to Lucilius, emphasized the need for retreat to understand oneself better. He wrote, Retire into yourself as much as you can. Associate with people who are likely to improve you. Welcome those whom you are capable of improving. The process is a mutual one. Men learn as they teach. This means taking a temporary break to reflect on the situation and your emotional responses. Stoicism teaches that our reactions are within our control, and by stepping away, we create the space to choose our responses consciously. Allow yourself the solitude to contemplate your feelings and thoughts. Use this time to assess the situation objectively without the immediate influence of emotions. Seneca's words echo the Stoic belief that self-awareness is the first step toward mastery over one's emotions. Imagine you're in a busy city and everything around you is loud and chaotic. Stoicism suggests that when dealing with tough feelings or a confusing situation involving someone, it might be a good idea to take a little break. It's like finding a quiet spot in the middle of the city to catch your breath. Think of this break like pressing a pause button. It's not about avoiding the situation forever, but more about giving yourself a chance to think without the noise of emotions buzzing around. The Stoic philosophers, the ancient wisdom dudes, talked a lot about finding a quiet place within ourselves. Seneca, one of those wise thinkers, once said, retreat into yourself as much as you can. It's like taking a step back to get a clearer view. In simple terms, it's a bit like taking a time out in a game. You don't leave the game forever. You just step away for a moment to clear your head. Stoicism teaches us that our feelings are a bit like the weather. They come and go. By stepping away, you're giving yourself a chance to let the storm in your head settle down, making it easier to figure out what to do next. Remember, this step isn't about running away. It's about pressing pause to find a quiet space in the middle of life's noise. Stoicism suggests stepping away because it believes that when things get tough, our emotions can act like a storm that clouds our judgment. By taking a little break, we can let the storm pass and see things more clearly. The Stoic idea is that in this quiet space, we can make choices based on reason rather than just how we're feeling in that moment. Find a quiet place or a quiet time, like taking a short walk, sitting in a park, or just sitting alone in your room. The key is to create a little space for yourself where you can think without distractions. Remember, it's not about escaping forever. It's about creating a moment of peace to figure things out. Think about whether you should distance yourself the second step in detaching from people involves a careful consideration of whether distancing is a rational and virtuous choice. Stoicism encourages us to align our actions with reason and virtue, emphasizing the pursuit of eudaimonia or flourishing through moral excellence. The Stoic concept of oikiosis the idea of appropriation or familiarization suggests that our natural inclination is toward virtue and social harmony. However, not all relationships contribute positively to our moral growth. The Stoics, like Epictetus, 
urged us to evaluate our associations and choose wisely. We cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them. Reflect on the nature of your relationship with the person in question. Are they conducive to your moral development and well-being? Stoicism teaches that distancing from toxic or harmful relationships is not a sign of weakness, but a manifestation of wisdom and virtue. The Stoic philosopher Epictetus, born a slave, exemplified this teaching through his emphasis on inner freedom, irrespective of external constraints. Imagine you're hanging out with friends and one of them starts doing things that make you feel not so great. Stoicism suggests that just like choosing good friends, you should think about whether it's a good idea to keep hanging out with this person. In everyday words, it's like asking yourself, is being around this person helping me grow and be happy, or is it making things harder? The Stoic philosophers would call this thinking about whether it's a wise move. Stoicism is big on choosing things that make us better people. So the idea here is to think about whether the person you're dealing with is making your life better or more challenging. The Stoics believe that good friends are like sunshine for our souls, helping us become better versions of ourselves. Imagine your friend is like a plant. If you water it, it grows and becomes healthy, but if you don't, it might not do so well. Similarly, think about whether the people around you are like water to your plant, or more like a thunderstorm. If being around someone is like sunshine, awesome. If not, Stoicism says it might be wise to consider creating a bit of distance. Remember, it's not about being mean or avoiding problems. It's about making choices that are good for your heart and your head. Stoicism is all about making life a bit more awesome, and that includes the people we choose to be around. Have a chat with someone you rely on. Stoicism, despite its focus on self-discipline and inner strength, does not advocate isolation. Human beings are social creatures and seeking guidance and support from trusted individuals is integral to the Stoic path. In the third step of detaching, the Stoic perspective encourages us to engage in open and honest communication with someone we rely on. This aligns with the Stoic idea of the philosophical friend, someone with whom you can share your thoughts, fears, and struggles. Seneca, in his letters, wrote extensively about the importance of friendship and the role it plays in our pursuit of virtue. He stated, The greatest blessing that can be bestowed upon a man, the next to that of a sound judgment and a modest temper, is that of a friendly acquaintance, a man he may consult just as he would a mirror. Share your thoughts and emotions with a trusted friend, someone who embodies the stoic values of wisdom and virtue. This conversation serves not only as a cathartic release, but also as an opportunity to gain valuable insights and perspectives. Stoicism teaches that by opening up to others, we strengthen our social bonds and foster a sense of community essential elements in our journey toward detachment. Stoicism suggests that when you're dealing with tough feelings or a confusing situation, it can be super helpful to talk to someone you trust. Imagine this person as your wise game buddy who can give you good tips. Stoicism is big on the idea that we're not meant to face everything alone, just like superheroes have sidekicks. Stoicism says we should have someone we can chat with about our thoughts and feelings. The Stoic philosophers believe that sharing our struggles with a friend is like having a secret weapon against the challenges of life. Think of someone you really trust, like a friend, family member, or even a teacher. It's like picking your game buddy when things get tricky. Share what's going on with them. It could be in person, over the phone, or even through messages whatever feels right. Remember, you're not burdening them, you're sharing a load. And just like a good game buddy, they might offer insights or perspectives you haven't thought about. 
Stoicism teaches that facing challenges with a friend by your side can make the journey a lot less bumpy. Establish limits for your feelings. The Stoic philosophy places a strong emphasis on understanding and managing our emotions rather than suppressing feelings. Stoicism encourages us to recognize and acknowledge them while maintaining rational control. In the fourth step of detachment, Stoicism teaches us to establish limits for our feelings. This does not mean becoming indifferent or unfeeling, but rather exercising control over the intensity and duration of our emotional responses. The Stoic concept of apatheia, often misunderstood as complete emotional detachment, actually refers to a state of tranquility achieved by mastering one's emotional responses. Epictetus, a prominent Stoic philosopher, articulated this concept by stating, we have the power to suspend the action of the passions or at least to resist our inclinations. Consider the Stoic practice of negative visualization where one contemplates potential challenges and losses to prepare for them mentally. By establishing limits for our feelings, we can approach situations with a measured and balanced perspective, preventing emotions from overpowering reason. Imagine your feelings are like colorful blocks, and sometimes they pile up and become a big tower. Well, Stoicism suggests that it's a good idea to set some rules for how high your tower of feelings can go. In simpler terms, when you're dealing with tough stuff, Stoicism says it's cool to feel your feelings, but it's also smart to make sure they don't tower over everything and make everything shaky. Stoicism believes that our feelings are a bit like those colorful blocks. They can be fun, but if we stack them too high, things might get wobbly. The Stoic philosophers talked about finding a balance, like building a tower that's tall enough to be interesting but not so tall that it falls over. Imagine your feelings are blocks of different colors, happy, sad, angry, and so on. It's like saying, hey, I'm okay with feeling these emotions, but I don't want them to take over everything. So you might decide that when things get tough, you'll let yourself feel those emotions, but also have a limit, like a tower that doesn't go too high. Setting limits means you're in charge, like a builder deciding how high to make a tower. It's about being okay with your feelings, but also making sure they don't knock everything down. Stoicism teaches us that finding this balance is like creating a sturdy tower that can withstand the challenges of the emotional game. Think about what might happen if you distance yourself from this person. The fifth step in detaching involves a thoughtful consideration of the potential consequences of distancing oneself from a particular person. Stoicism teaches us to engage in foresight, assessing the long-term implications of our actions. In the Stoic framework, this aligns with the concept of prosoch or attention to the present moment. While Stoicism emphasizes the importance of the present, it also encourages us to consider the future consequences of our decisions. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Roman Emperor, reflected this in his meditations. It is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste much of it. Consider the possible outcomes of distancing yourself. Will it lead to personal growth and emotional well-being, or might it result in a loss that could have been avoided? Stoicism teaches us to weigh the potential benefits and drawbacks, applying rationality and virtue to our decision-making process. Imagine you're walking through a forest, and there are different trails to take. Stoicism suggests that when you're considering stepping away from someone, it's like thinking about which trail to follow in the forest. Stoicism believes in thinking ahead, like planning your moves in a game. Choosing to distance yourself from someone is a bit like picking a trail in the forest. You want to think about where it might lead. The Stoic philosophers thought that looking ahead helps us make choices that lead to better outcomes. Imagine the person you're thinking about is at the entrance of the forest and you're deciding whether to follow the same path or choose a different one. 
Ask yourself, if I step away from this person, what might happen? It's like considering the different trails and thinking about where each one might lead. Stoicism teaches us that thinking ahead is like having a map in the forest. It helps you make smarter choices. So, before you decide to distance yourself, take a moment to imagine the possible outcomes. It's not about predicting the future, but more like being a thoughtful explorer in the forest of life. Give yourself a break from social media. The prevalence of social media in contemporary society has introduced new challenges to maintaining emotional well-being. Stoicism, with its timeless wisdom, provides insights into managing our relationship with digital platforms and the constant influx of information. In the sixth step of detachment, Stoicism encourages us to give ourselves a break from social media. The Stoic philosophers, who lived in a world vastly different from ours, nevertheless grappled with external influences that could disturb their inner peace. Seneca, in his essay on the shortness of life, lamented the distractions that hindered a life well lived. It is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste much of it. Apply this stoic insight to the digital realm, the constant barrage of information and comparisons on social media can divert our attention from what truly matters. The stoic practice of apathia becomes particularly relevant here. By temporarily disconnecting from social media, we create a space for introspection, reducing the external stimuli that may contribute to emotional turmoil. Seneca's admonition to focus on what truly matters finds resonance in this step of detachment. Imagine social media is like a big puzzle, and sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming, like trying to solve a puzzle with too many pieces. Well, Stoicism suggests that it's okay to take a break from this digital puzzle to give your brain some rest. In simple terms, it's like putting down the puzzle pieces for a little while so you can come back with a fresh mind. Stoicism teaches us that our minds need breaks, just like our bodies need rest. Social media can be like a constant stream of puzzle pieces, updates, pictures and news, and sometimes it can be a bit too much. The Stoic philosophers believe that taking a break from this digital puzzle can help us keep our minds clear and focused. Think of social media like a puzzle you're working on. When it starts feeling overwhelming, it's totally fine to take a break. It's like putting the puzzle away for a bit and doing something else. This could be going for a walk, reading a book, or just chilling without screens for a little while. Stoicism suggests that by giving your brain a break, you're making sure it ensure your digital life doesn't become a complex puzzle by taking control of your time. Similar to deciding when to engage with a puzzle and when to take a break, managing your digital presence isn't about quitting social media permanently, but ensuring it doesn't overwhelm you. Focus on your essential needs, as outlined in the final step, of detaching from people and situations in the practical guide. This step emphasizes a deliberate focus on one's needs, aligning seamlessly with the Stoic philosophy of Stoicism, which emphasizes self-sufficiency and inner resilience. Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher born into slavery, underscored the importance of distinguishing between what is within our control and what is not. Stoicism encourages us to focus on our needs, not just in a materialistic sense, but in terms of emotional well-being and virtue. Consider the Stoic practice of voluntary discomfort, where individuals intentionally expose themselves to challenging situations to build resilience. Apply this principle to focus on your fundamental needs for emotional stability and moral integrity. The Stoic maxim, virtue is the only good, reminds us that true fulfillment comes from aligning our actions with moral excellence. Epictetus succinctly captured this Stoic principle, stating that happiness and freedom begin with a clear understanding that some things are within our control 
and some are not. By focusing on what is within our control, our thoughts, actions and reactions, we empower ourselves to navigate relationships and situations with stoic wisdom. Imagine life as a buffet with various items on the table, some good, some not so good. Stoicism suggests that when deciding what to put on your plate, it's wise to focus on what you truly need, akin to choosing snacks mindfully. Stoicism is about making wise choices in life, much like selecting the best items from a buffet. Stoic philosophers believe that what we need isn't always the same as what we want. Therefore, choosing what truly fills you up and brings long-term happiness is crucial. Consider your life as a buffet with friends, activities, and experiences laid out. Instead of grabbing everything, Stoicism advises selecting things that genuinely contribute to your well-being. In the journey of detaching from people and situations, Stoicism offers profound insights and practical guidance. By temporarily stepping away, considering rationality, engaging in open communication, setting limits for feelings, contemplating consequences, taking breaks from external influences like social media, and focusing on fundamental needs, you align your actions with stoic virtues. Stoicism, with its timeless wisdom, reminds us that true detachment isn't about emotional apathy, but achieving inner tranquility and resilience. These principles serve as a beacon, guiding us toward a life of virtue, wisdom, and emotional well-being. In the words of Seneca, true happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future.